Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. My name is Amanda and I'm from amandacrochets.com and in today's tutorial I'm going to show you how to make this granny stripe scarf. The granny stripe scarf measures 8 inches wide by 44 inches long. However, you can always change this up to make it thinner or longer or wider or shorter, whatever you choose. So I used this yarn and it's a self-striping yarn so it has some nice color blocks to it. But again, this is the granny stripe stitch. And I really, really like how this turned out. And again, it's that self striping yarn. I did not color control the yarn. So how, however the yarn came out of the skein, that is how I worked this up. And it has some very pretty blues and grays and a light and dark pink. And then my skein just happened to start and end with that purple. So I thought that was really nice. This is a lightweight scarf. So you can always use different yarn if you like. This is made using a number three lightweight yarn. If you wanted to use worsted weight yarn or even bulky weight yarn, you can certainly do that as well. I will show you everything you need to know as far as how to change up the stitch multiple. And then as far as making the scarf longer you can just make more rows. So let's get started with today's tutorial on how to make the granny striped scarf. So for today's tutorial you're going to need one skein of the Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton and the color I'm going to be using today for today's tutorial is called Sprinkles on Top. And as you can see it's a very pretty rainbow color. Just love those colors. And you can get this yarn from Hobby Lobby. This is 5 ounces or 142 grams. It's 335 yards or 306 meters, 100% cotton, and again it's that light number 3 yarn. And they recommend a US 7 or 4.5 millimeter crochet hook. And again this is sprinkles on top. Now for my scarf. I used this color and this is called Fondant Fun. Again, if you want to use any other color, you can definitely do so. I just really like this yarn and I really like the softness of it a lot. And this yarn does come in a few different colorways, so there's definitely an option out there for you. Unless you wanted to make this a solid color, you can definitely do that as well. So you're going to need one, you're going to need one skein of that Yarn Bee Sugar Wheel Cotton. And then you're also going to need a size H 5mm crochet hook. So to get started with the granny stitch scarf, you're going to need to make a chain that is a multiple of 3 plus 1. So that means you take the number 3 and you multiply it by any number. And then you add one chain to the very end. So for my scarf, I just made a chain of 30, so 10 times 3. And then I added one more chain to the very end for a total of 31. If you would like to change up the size of your scarf, you can definitely do that. All you would need to do is make sure that your scarf is in a multiple of 3 and then add one more chain to the very end. So to make a chain, you're going to do yarn over your hook and pull through that loop on your hook. That's 1, 2, 3, four, five, six. Continue making your chains until you have a chain of 31 or your desired length. Okay, once you have 31 chains or your desired width, we can continue to row one. So for row one, we're gonna make one, we're gonna make two double crochets in the fourth chain from your hook. So that loop on your hook does not count. You're gonna count four chains from your hook. So one, two, three, and four. And in that fourth chain, you're going to yarn over your hook, insert your hook into that fourth chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that completes your first double crochet. So we're going to make one more double crochet in that same chain. So yarn over your hook, 
insert your hook into that same chain, yarn over, pull up a loop, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. So now you have two double crochets and that chain three that you skipped at the very beginning is going to count as your first double crochet. Now if you are new to crocheting, I highly suggest getting a stitch marker and putting it in the top of that chain three. So if you look right here, this is where your stitch is and if you move one stitch over, that is the top of your chain three. So you want to put your stitch marker in this stitch right here. That way you know that is the beginning of your row. Next we're going to skip two chains and we're going to make three double crochets into the next chain. So skip two chains, one and two, into the chain after that you're going to make three double crochets. So again, yarn over your hook, yarn over, yarn over your hook, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And you want to have three double crochets in that same chain space. Okay, so then we're just going to repeat this across the row. So again, skip two chains and then make three double crochets all in that next chain. So skip one and two into the chain after that, three double crochets. Skip two chains, in the chain after that, make three double crochets. Now a lot of times when you see a granny stitch, you see the chain one or even a chain two in between your stitches. For this one, we're not going to make any chain ones. We're simply just going to be working in the spaces indicated. Skip two chains and in the chain after that, again, you're going to make three double crochets. Continue skipping two chains and making three double crochets in that next stitch until you get to the very end and I will show you what row one looks like. Okay, so I finished row one and this is what row one looks like. So again, you have that chain three which counts as your first double crochet and then you have all your three double crochets together and when you get to the very end, you are going to have three double crochets in that very last chain. And again, if you're new to crocheting, you want to put your stitch marker in the top of that last stitch that you made. So again, this is row one. For row two, we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And turn your work. Next, we're going to make three double crochets in between the three double crochet clusters from the previous row. So what I mean is you're going to skip over this cluster of stitches and you're going to be working in between the stitches right here. So every time you see the three double crochets together, you're going to skip over that entire section and you're going to work right into that space in between. So you're going to work three double crochets into that chain space or to, into that space right here. So you just go right underneath and work your three double crochets. And by working in that space, you actually start your pattern. Again, that chain one, 
or those that chain three at the beginning is going to count as a double crochet. So you want to put your stitch marker in the top of that chain three space, which is going to be right here. So for row two, you're just going to repeat this all the way across. So again, skip that next chain, uh, double three double crochet cluster, and in that space after that, work three double crochets. Skip that next three double crochet cluster and work in that space making three double crochets. And just repeat this all the way across until you get to the end of the row. And when you get to the end, I will show you how to finish row two and move on to row three. So just make three double crochets in between the spaces along your row. Okay, so I've come to the end of row two and you have two options to end. So we need to make one double crochet into the last stitch. Now you can either make one double crochet and that's chain three, so in that space in that chain where you have that stitch marker, you can make a double crochet there. Or if you think it would be easier for you, you can find that space in between your two double crochets and your chain three, and you can work one double crochet in that space. So it's really up to you. It's not gonna make any difference at all. I just like to go in between that space versus that chain, that top of the chain three. I just find it a little bit easier. And here is what row two looks like. And as you can see, I already have a color change with my yarn. And this is basically what the pattern is going to look like. Okay, so for row three, you're going to chain three and turn. And for row three, you're going to work two double crochets into the space between the double crochet and the three double crochet cluster. So again, that chain three is going to count as your double crochet. And you're going to work in between this double crochet and this cluster. So in this space right here, you're going to put three double, I'm sorry, two double crochets. So one and two. Don't forget to move your stitch marker up to that top of that chain three. So now you have two double crochets in that chain three, which counts as a double crochet. So you technically have three double crochets in the beginning. And then next, you're just going to make three double crochets in the space between the three double crochet clusters until the end of your row. So again, skip over this cluster and in between that space, in between, you're going to make three double crochets. So one, two, and three. And just work three double crochets in between each of the clusters. And then when you get to the very end of your scarf, in this chain three space right here, you're going to put three double crochets into that space. So work three double crochets in each of the spaces across your row, and I will meet up with you at the end and show you how to move on to the next row. Okay, so here is what three rows of your pattern looks like so far. And again, you can see that all of your chain, all of your double crochet clusters are in between those spaces. And again, when you end row three, you have the three double crochets in that space. So to continue making your scarf, 
you're just going to repeat rows two and three over and over again and I just made my scarf as long as I had enough yarn I don't know the exact number of rows that I had but I can definitely let you know in a minute and I feel like I just used up the entire skein just for this scarf so again you're going to repeat rows two and three over and over again so to repeat row two that chain one is going to or that chain three is going to count as your first double crochet you're going to make three double crochets in the spaces in between your clusters then when you get to the end you're going to find that space in between your two double crochets in your chain three and you're going to make one double crochet when you go to row three you're going to chain three and you're going to work two double crochets right into that very first space like I showed you just right here and then you're going to work three double crochets in between that space so I will work one more repeat for you with row two and row three so I can show you what it looks like a little bit larger and then I'll also tell you how many rows I ended up making for my scarf so I will meet up with you in a few minutes okay so I made a couple more rows just so you get an idea of what the pattern will look like this is a really easy and quick pattern that is just a two row repeat and I ended up making my scarf in just one day because of how quick and simple it is. So for my scarf, you can again see that it's just a self-striping yarn. And I ended up making some color blocks. And I ended up making 97 rows total for my scarf. So that kind of gives you a rough estimate of how many rows that I made as well as how long the scarf is. So again it's 44 inches long by 8 inches wide and you can always change up the sizing if you would like by just making a different amount of chains as well as making more or less rows. Now if you also find that your chain is a little bit too tight you can always go up hook size and when you start row 1 go back to the desired hook that I mentioned so a size H hook so just a few different tips for some beginners with the stitch markers and if your chain is a little bit too tight so I hope you enjoyed today's tutorial on how to make the granny stripe scarf I hope you really enjoy this and I would love to see the different colors that you make so if you would like you can always tag me on Instagram using hashtag Amanda crochets and then that way I will be able to see all of your beautiful work. Again, thank you so much for joining me on learning how to make the Granny Stripe Scarf. I hope you have a great day. Please like, comment, and subscribe to see all future videos by me. And as always, happy crocheting. Bye.